Hey everybody, it's Abolitionist Jay with, well, today's vlog. And uh, yes, I did miss yesterday. I don't recall getting any notifications from anybody, so obviously you guys aren't that worried about me. Thanks, people. Just kidding. Yeah, anyway, uh, as you can see, uh, things are a little different today. Number one, I'm outside again, but I have a guest. Yeah, we're, uh, that's, uh, that's Shane Radliff from the Vanu Podcast. We are up at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. And, uh, yeah, I skipped yesterday's vlog. Unfortunately, I had problems uploading. I was trying to get one of those little videos that I've been trying to take on my phone. And I tried a bunch of times upload, trying to upload at different spots as I was making my way out here to Michigan yesterday. And just no matter what happened, it just it kept crashing and I couldn't get it done. And then when Shane and I finally hooked up somewhere around 4 o'clock uh, at a Walmart in Kalamazoo, um, I tried one more time, and then we gave up, and then we went out to find camping stuff, uh, find our camping uh, location and whatnot, and we ended up at the fest early. So, what's up, man? Thanks for joining me. This yeah. is great. Yeah, I certainly certainly appreciate it. It was great to uh, to meet up with you yesterday, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's it's not there's no unfortunate scenario, but yeah, we got we got ran out by the forest pledge. Oh. They, didn't, they didn't want us to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just a quick update since I did miss yesterday. Basically, yesterday, Murder Dog and I did a lot of driving. Um, and a lot of sitting around in parking lots trying to get uploading to work. Uh, as I mentioned during my last blog, a vlog, Murder Dog and I did take off that night shortly after I recorded that and uploaded that video. Uh, we did make it to almost the Pennsylvania-Ohio border before I got too tired and had to crash for the night. Uh, we pulled over in a rest area, slept for about three or four hours, and then got up and continued on our way. Uh, I ended up making my making the first use of my planet fitness membership outside of uh of my little territory in new york stopped in some random town called austinville ohio which happened to have a planet fitness they were right off route 80 that was perfect and then uh i can just continued on my way and i slowly made my way up here and shane uh shane and i had originally planned on meeting up anyway we were going to meet up and i see him walking this way now he may be too shy to come over this way but uh our friend chris the wandering agorist uh, the three of us, now that we're all technically van nomading-ish type stuff things, uh, the three of us were going to meet up last night and uh, hang out for one night at a different campsite and then make our way over to the fest today. Unfortunately, uh, we got we, when we finally met up with Chris... We we got to the site. We got to the site that he had uh, sent us the Google. Uh, you know, he sent us a Google Maps the uh, coordinates of. We we met up there. It seemed like a really nice place. We got together. We sat down. You know, we're standing there just having a couple of beers, just relaxing. We weren't even there. What half an hour maybe? Yeah, Thirty minutes tops. Yeah, and all of a sudden another truck comes rolling through this area. And at first I just thought it was some you know guy just you know driving through. Um, but no, it was the it was the Michigan DNR, which is what is it, Department of Natural Resources? Yep. You said, yep, yep, and uh, checking up on us because yeah, apparently we were in violation of a whole lot of things. We didn't get any tickets. We didn't get like you know threatened with arrest or anything like that. The guy was actually pretty nice. You know, he was just doing his job. But yeah, what did yeah, we the, get? The, for the forest pledge tend to be a little nicer. Um, but uh, you know, they're still pledge after all. <laughs> yeah, it, it really depends. I was saying that to you earlier. The the, the, the what should we call? It? Like up in my neck of the woods, the the for the the park police are actually more dick more of dicks because really? they're on a power trip because they think you know they they actually they want to be able to chase people down and do stuff and there's things they're not allowed to do so they actually even more of a dick when they catch you with stuff. Um, but yeah, this guy. I mean, this guy for for a state employee, he was he was nice. But he basically told us that we, you know, he, he basically said a lot of things that let, uh, I don't know, I took it as him letting us know that we could have gotten ticketed for any number of these things. Um, like the fact that we were drinking uh, alcohol out in the open. Uh, apparently that's a no-no, which is actually inter interesting because the three of us were standing there after we op all opened our first beer. And we were like, I wonder if you're allowed to do this here. We found out shortly after, no, no, you're not. <laughs> so we had open, so we had open containers. Uh, you know, we we're drinking in public. Uh, what else was it? Oh, Shane had taken his uh, his tent out of his car. Which it had, he, he hadn't set it up. It was just laying next to his car. Just trying, to, trying to dig it out of dig it out of all the all the stuff that's in there. Yeah. Yeah. So the guy the guy mentioned the tent like, oh, you can't camp here. So obviously, you know, if we had tried to camp there, would, we would have gotten in trouble for that. Um, we were, we didn't have the proper permits. Apparently you need some special permit, which was one of those stupid things you can go down to like, where, I don't even remember where he's trying to send us down to. So we had to go down the road someplace and pay some money and they'd get, like pretty much give you a permit on the spot, but that's how much of a bullshit it is. Oh, you need a permit. Oh, but you can get one right now. You literally just walk and just give us money. That, that's all it is. It's a money-making scheme. So we didn't have that and Murder Dog wasn't on a leash. 
So, like, technically, we could have gotten, like, written up for tickets or, like, you know, whatever, for, like, four different violations. Yeah, we could have, we could have left really unhappy. <laughs> yeah, so, like, that that was, like, literally half an hour, and we were chased out of our first spot. And we had a backup spot that uh, Chris had also found for us that we were actually going to head down to. And since we literally had to pass right by the Circle Pine Center, we decided, hey, let's just go over there and see who's there. And we got here, and there's only two people. It was... uh our friend Miriam, who's apparently been left in charge right now, she's not very happy about that, um, and Lufine. And uh, after standing around talking to them for a while, actually Miriam and I took a walk to go speak to the to the girl who's now the director of this place. And, uh, you know, we kind of asked, you know, is it all right if we kind of stay here? Because, you know, it's a day early, only the organizers are supposed to be here. But we kind of worked it out because since I paid for my family, my entire family to be here for the whole weekend, and they're not using the tickets, obviously, because they're not here. Uh, and I did find somebody who I was able to give them to, but they can't come up until tomorrow. Technically, I paid for extra people for an entire for an entire night. And we're like, yeah, we can use that money. So, yeah, we actually got to stay here last night. So, yeah, we've been at the – we started the fest early, man. We've been here since, like, what, like 5, 6 o'clock yesterday. And uh, Yeah, yeah, it's always nice. Last year I came down, uh, you know, the, the, the organizing night, too. And, you know, it's always good to, uh, you know, get to the, the fest as early as possible. So – um, yeah, not just, uh, I mean, we spent this morning, you know, moving a bunch of benches over and such, and, you know, it's, it's been good seeing everybody early and watching everyone pour in. And, uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm envisioning this afternoon, there's going to be a bunch of people here. So. Yeah. It's uh, cause it is still early. I mean, right now it's only, uh, it's about one o'clock. So, uh, the fest officially started only about an hour ago, right. but yeah, like Shane said, we put ourselves to work this morning. You know, we offered to, uh, go retrieve all the picnic benches and, uh, bring them back for our setup and stuff like that. So I don't know. I feel I don't know about you. I feel productive. I feel like uh, I feel like we've I feel like we've earned our keep basically. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah. If, if, yeah. I, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the weather isn't looking too great at the moment. I mean, it's it's you know it's comfortable outside, but it's very cloudy. We were told it was supposed to be sunny and uh, 80 degrees today. Haven't seen that yet. Uh, we are expecting rain again tomorrow, but that's that's starting to become a staple at the fest. I mean, the past two years it absolutely dumped on us for like. I don't know, two years ago, it was like 12 straight hours. I think that they actually recorded like something like three inches in like a 16-hour span. It was insane. Um, but that was the year I got to test out my, my tent and found out that it is indeed waterproof because Murder Dog and I stayed dry the whole time. Um, and then last year, we got rain on and off. So, you know, what are you going to do? You plan this thing that, that far in advance, you can't really, uh, you know, Mother Nature's a bitch. And, well, you know, she likes to fuck with us. So, But we're yeah. here, so it's uh, it's exciting. And hopefully this vlog will actually get up today. Um like I said, I did work out. A, I worked out a deal with the new director. Uh, I, I offered to. I offered to pay her some money towards their internet bill if she would be willing to let me use their internet. And because they have Wi-Fi here, but you got to get really close to the farmhouse. And I, I mean, as as I've been talking, not where we're camping. <laughs> yeah, we're we're, we're kind of far away from there. Yeah. And it's also um, what should call it? As I've described on, through this entire journey, unfortunately, even when I have great Wi-Fi connection, unfortunately. D tube and D sound can be a little touchy, and uh, you know sometimes it's only when I have a hardwired connection that I can guarantee that the upload's going to work right away. So, and that that honestly seems like it's the most common, I guess, the most common obstacle for van nomads, especially the digital ones. You know, trying to find Wi-Fi to upload videos. Uh, you go to you know some some town in in Mexico and. Uh, you know, it says three hours to upload, and either you've got to take the chance and hope that it goes in three hours, or uh, you know, you just kind of say screw it and move on. So, yeah, that's uh, certainly difficult. Yeah, it, it can be. Uh, it, it it can be a little frustrating. You know, I, I've never even run into those. Like, it, it, it'll tell me that. Like, it'll say. Like, it'll say it's going to take a couple hours. It never does. Even when it goes through, it, it, the most I've had to wait is like for an actual upload to succeed is usually only 20 to 30 minutes, even with That's Wi-Fi. But I'm also not, you know, my vlogs, the longest one I think I've done is 45 minutes. So I don't, and I've also finally altered the settings enough. So it's not this gigantic file. Yeah. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm uploading stuff that's less than a gig, like usually like a half a gig, at, uh, half a gig at the most. Um, so yeah, you, but again, yeah, you do have to find Wi-Fi. I mean, back home, I mean, at least for me, back, back in New York, it was convenient. Because uh, there's Optimum online. They're, they have their Wi-Fi spread out everywhere. And half of Long Island has Optimum in their homes. And I still technically have an account. Even though I close mine down, it's still open until tomorrow. What's that? Today's 21st, right? Yeah, till, till tomorrow. <laughs> till tomorrow, I still have an Optimum account. So I was able to pick up their Wi-Fi pretty much all over Long Island, which was great. 
Um, cause that was actually the most secure Wi-Fi, And it was one of the ones that, I mean, even though technically it's open to a lot of people, I always trusted it more cause I had it in my own house. So I, you know, that's what I used to send all my information anyway. Um, you know, cause I get the warnings. Like, I don't know. Oh, you haven't had to deal with it yet, but like at planet fitness, like I'll get the warnings of both my phone and my laptop will kick me back the warning from Firefox going, this is an untrusted source, uh, untrusted, yeah. uh, you know, whatever uh, connection that, yeah, connection that you're using. Do you want to proceed? Um, cause I forgot I actually set up all those things on Firefox to be careful. Um, yeah, with wise, Optimum, very wise. <laughs> yeah. But Optimum, I don't have that problem, but again, you, you don't really have that choice. I mean, if you, if you want to be out on the road and you want to, you know, you want to upload content, you, you're going to have to deal with that. You know, as much yeah. as, I know, I know security culture is a big deal for, uh, for people like us. You know, you talk about it all the time on TVP and, yeah. uh, and LUA for that matter, uh, your other podcast. Um, but yeah, you, you have to, it's one of those things you have to sacrifice at least. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, if we can get Chris on the mic at some point, well, we'll we're going to, we're going to make him have a sit down. Maybe we'll do a podcast with him, make him a little more comfortable <laughs> as he's, he's sitting on the other side of the camera, just smir- smiling at us as I'm talking about him. Um, but I mean, you know, he's been doing a lot longer than us. I'm sure there's tricks and stuff that we're missing and the, you know, you could always sure, find yeah. ways around it, but at least what I've dealt with so far, I've just kind of had to accept right away that yeah, I have to uh, have to give up a little bit of that security in order to uh, in, yeah. in order to be a little more free. Um, you got to do it, and uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there 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 are obviously ways. Um, some of them are a little a little expensive, the internet wise, and and not not necessarily efficient enough. But I mean, yeah, there there are solutions out there, and things are always progressing. So. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll we'll see, we'll see. You know, digital nomadism is a big thing now, so people are finding ways around it. Uh, maybe we just don't, uh, you know, maybe we aren't privy to that information at this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, there is, yeah, there's definitely. There, I mean, I, I know there's ways to do these things out there, but yeah, some of them are pretty expensive. I mean, because I considered getting my own, like, you know, getting my own hotspots and like whatever, so I'd ne- never have to deal with this type of stuff. But you know, the whole the whole goal is to try to keep the the funding down to a minimum here, especially because I mean, you're you're somebody who, I mean. You and I have talked about this before, and obviously, uh, and a lot of my a lot of my fans know you because I talk about you all the time. But I mean, you were you were planning on doing this like a whole year from now, and then you just kind of jumped. Yeah. And I, I've actually mentioned this a couple times. I haven't talked to you about this yet, so I'm just going to spring this on you now. But I like to take credit, a little credit for you jump, uh, yeah. jump jumping into this I right told now. You, I told you after I after after we had that after we interviewed you over on uh, TVP that I was jealous. Like, man, I exactly. Hit, I so I, road, I, so I well, said, whether it. I had anything to do with it or not, I'm going to take a little credit and say I pushed Shane over the edge and said, "Fuck it." If this my, my the way I looked, it, it was like it was one, just perfect timing. I watched all those YouTube videos and you know for for months for months on the lifestyle, and then you did it, and I started watching your vlogs, and I said. Yeah, why am I still here, here in Illinois? Like, why am I not? Le- why am I not leaving? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, see, you, I see you're being a lot nicer than I was to myself because I, I've kind of looked at it. I, I, I envisioned Shane like just sitting in his room one day or in his his place and just going, God damn it! I've been prepping this. I've been doing like I've been doing everything the right way. I'm taking my time. I've done a full podcast about this, and this fucking moron just throws himself in an <laughs> element, and just goes off and starts doing shit. If he can do it, there's no way in hell I can't. Like that's what that's really what I pictured. I'm like, yeah. If, if, if this, I mean, we talked about this last night. We had a bunch of bunch of great conversations last night that we unfortunately did not record. Yeah, we should have. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of my attitude with things. I'm like, pe- most people, I'm like, if I can do it, you guys can do this shit. I'm an idiot. I'm computer illiterate. Um, I, I barely prepped for this fuck. I talked about it for months, but I barely prepped for this fucking experience. I literally just throw murder dog and I, and a bunch of shit in my vehicle and said, all right, let's do this. Um, so yeah, if I could pull this stuff off, man, I think anybody, and I don't know, like you've, you've obviously only been technically doing this for a day now. Right. Um, but you have, because you've talked to so many more people who've done this shit. Um, you know, I know you have a lot of insight into this, but I, I mean, I've said already that even after only three weeks of being on the road like this, Whenever people ask me, despite the issues I've run on into, it's it is the most freeing experience. Like aside from like I, I aside from being separated from my kids and that being bumming, like and even like you know you guys have, you guys know all my fucking I tell you guys everything that fucking happens out here. So all the fucking bullshit I've had to deal with, despite all that, I on I feel more free in these three weeks than I probably have since I was a kid, and I didn't recognize these that you know I didn't have these. I didn't have the understandings and I just felt free because I was a kid and I was having fun or whatever. Like I honestly, yeah. And I, I highly encourage, I've, I've said this to a bunch of people. I'm like, if you ever get the opportunity, I, I think everybody should at least, at least do what I'm doing. I mean, do it better than I'm doing, but at least do the experimental and just try it. Right. Even if it's like for go, like go a couple of months, a month or two. Or two. Or well, no, but yeah, well, obviously to prep for it, but I'm just mm-hmm. talking about like, just get to the experience that even do it for a couple of weeks yeah. or a month. 
just do you know just to be out here and try to see like number one i mean i said all along for me part of this was kind of seeing what i was made of like what i could actually accomplish out here and how dependent i had become on all these things in my life all the technology all the conveniences you know because i oh i've talked i've talked about for the longest time that i hated living the suburban lifestyle despite the fact that i've done it for the last 25 fucking years yeah um but uh you know it was kind of like I want to get back to that lifestyle anyway, but am I cut out for it? And I thought this was a great experience to test it out and just, I don't know, man, being out here, like I said, it, it really is. It's free. It's, it is so fucking freeing, even though you have to worry about, you know, the fucking bludgies coming up on you and whatever possibly and other people fucking with you. It's just, yeah. And, and I think it's most importantly, even if you can just do it for a couple of weeks or, or a month or something like that, just go on a road trip or something. Uh, I, 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 one reason I really promote van nomadism is it's, it's a really good first and even interim lifestyle to get you to where you want to be. If that's off grid homestead, home, off grid homesteading or whatever, uh, it's a really good way to get yourself out of the servile society and get yourself out of that mindset and kind of start to decompress from all of the, all of the shit in the servile society that, uh, you know, we as, you know, anarchists and venuans despise what we're trying to, to avoid to, to be free. So, um, I think even just getting out there for a couple few weeks or a month can really, I guess, uh, you know, illuminate you. Yeah, uh, in, in in such a manner as to, I don't know, maybe maybe make a more permanent decision. Uh, maybe you realize that uh, you know I can't do this job anymore. I don't need to. You know, this this lifestyle isn't hard. Doesn't take much money. I can make it work. And um, yeah, from everyone I've from everyone I've really seen. I mean, there's there's been a couple I've come across where they've uh, you know done the lifestyle temporarily and then stopped doing it for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't like it or whatever. But generally speaking, once people you know get out and live it. Um, it's not about uh, you know buying it. It's not not about buying a stationary house. It's about what vehicle am I going to buy next to live in. Uh, <laughs> so that's typically what it, what I've what I've found out. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, like I said, yeah, that's I mean that's great. And you know, we you and I were talking. I mean, we've, we've been talking about this on and off, but we were actually literally talking about it like an hour or so ago. When we were doing the whole picnic table thing about the fact that there really are like you fu- you just there are more and more people that are doing this. And whether it's out of necessity, like, you know, they lost their home or whatever, because, you know, it, I, I think a lot of this did start during the, uh, you know, during the housing crash where a lot of people because, I mean, you've talked about the fact that a lot of millennials are involved in this type yeah. of stuff. I mean, they obviously have a completely different outlook on life than, than you and I do. I mean, you're a millennial, too, but like <laughs> the leftist, the leftist variety I'm referring to. Right. Um, you know, they obviously think a lot differently than you and I would. Um, but. They, you and, know, they, like, and they aren't, and they don't. I mean, they they are they do are they're living a Vanu lifestyle, and they are Vanuans, but at the same time, they aren't as worried about security as, uh, you know, Vanuans would be. So it's it's certainly it's not a from from what I've seen, it's it's not a, you know a rejection. It's not really a wholesale rejection of the servile society. It's it is the fact that you know I don't want to work for you know fifty five sixty years and then retire to be able to do this stuff. I want to do it now when I'm actually you know of, of age to surf and to mountain climb and things like that. So. Um, that and also the leftist economics, they, you know, think that rent is theft and, uh, you know, as free market anarchists, I, always, I don't believe that, but, uh, you know, I can understand not wanting to pay $2,000 a month in rent. I can certainly understand that. And I'm, you know, over, overjoyed that rather than political crusading, these people just said, why don't we move into a van and, you know, subvert the problem completely. So, um, I, I it's, it's, it's definitely a growing, uh, definitely a growing, a growing trend. 4,000 people at, uh, RTR, the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous in Quartzhead, Arizona, the biggest fan nomad meetup last year. Or I guess this year and uh, in January it'll be it'll be more than that. So uh, and there are a lot of people just living in their vehicles in Quartzsite, Arizona. Uh, one video I saw it's cited as two million, but there are only seven million people that live in Arizona. So I think that's a BS statistic. <laughs> um, but there's there are a lot of them out there in the desert. So this lifestyle is is growing in popularity, and technology is making it far easier to do, and uh, especially technology in in, in regards to uh, I guess uh, digital nomadism, being able to have a you know a, a location independent job where you can basically work forever um and then live this lifestyle you know however you want to so it's 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 good to see it really is get, seeing people get out of the survival society and live and actually truly live yeah uh, yeah and like i said i mean it it is it's it's people it, it really is people from all walks of life and people from all different ideologies and it's you know and like whether it is a necessity thing because like i said i know a lot of people started doing it uh, i found that did it during the housing crash they lost their house they were foreclosed on or whatever and they did it you know just out of oh what else are we going to do we're, okay we have a big vehicle let's just do that for right now and then they figured out hey wait a minute this isn't so bad um or the people who are doing it by design you know i mean we were talking about it earlier i um 
I mean, I've mentioned the uh, the old guy Stefan that I met, uh, who who spotted me in a parking lot because he just he knew what I was up to by you know based on the fact that he's been doing it for two years and living out of the back of a Jeep Cherokee, and uh, but I don't think I mentioned he actually told me uh, that one of the last times I ran into him when we we hung out for a bit that uh, on his way back from being out on the east end of the island the day before, he had actually stopped at uh, one of the library that I actually recorded my epi- my episode of Abolition Abstractions with Anthony Samaroff, and. Uh, he told me he spotted another person up there, uh, a woman who appeared to be in like her late fifties, early sixties, um, who was living out of her van. She had a she had a stealth van. She had a stealth cat up, a uh, set set up, what you call it, and uh, she ha- she actually has a uh, a rescue pit bull that she has living with her out of the back of a van. I think he said it was like an Econo line or something like that, but she has it stealthed out with like the the, yeah. w- the windows. I think the, w- the actually it was one of the ones that didn't have the windows in the back already, so it's like you know that type of deal, and you only had to black out the very back windows and stuff, and. Uh, uh, she's apparently been doing it for about a year now, and she's actually she was a full time teacher for the longest time. Now she's like semi retired because she only teaches um, part time. She teaches like half the year, and the rest of the time she just travels around in her fucking awesome. van. And uh, and he said he said by all accounts she like she's not the type of person you would expect to see. Like you would expect you know a, yeah, they're, like, they're, a homeless they're a type those, woman. They're, yeah, there are a lot, like, there are a lot of those folks that like you'll see them on YouTube and like they. I mean, they're not, I mean, there's kind of this conception of the, in the survival society that, you know, these are just, you know, dirty homeless people. No, um, you know, they're, I mean, women-wise, there's some, att- there's some really attractive women doing this, ones that, you know, came from, I, that you would, you would think would, you know, kind of be the uppity sort of folks in the survival society, but, you know, they're, they're doing this lifestyle and they're loving it. So, I mean, it really is, um, it's not for everybody, but it doesn't really matter where you come from, you know, what, what you're doing, um, if you have any experience doing this or not. Um, you know, there are a lot of folks doing it and it's, it's really not, uh, it's really not that, uh, difficult of a lifestyle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, you can obviously learn on the go as I have been doing. Um, you know, so it, it you know, like I said, I, I think that, um, everybody should at least try it. Um, uh, you know, cause I, I, I don't expect to be doing this forever. Obviously this is just a temp, this was just a temporary measure for me, but I mean, Absent my kids, I think I could. I I personally could see myself doing this on a more permanent basis. I I dig this enough already, and I've I've barely scratched the surface, you know. Because I've been doing the one thing that I, I often jo- joke with Shane about is like I do the one thing that that El, El Rayo always talked about was was the one was the one option you probably shouldn't take <laughs> the whole the whole city Vanu thing. Yeah, like I've been doing that. You know, I've been trying to pull this off in the fucking suburbs of Long Island. And, uh, you know, had successes and failures in, a, in the three week span that I've been doing it. And, uh, you know, it, so if I could pull it off there, you can definitely pull it off just about anywhere. And, yeah. uh, you know, just, just for the freedom aspect and just, uh, I don't know if you're into the whole self-actualization thing and like, you know, actually doing some deep, you know, deep thinking about yourself and stuff. I think it's an amazing experience for that. Cause I've had, you know, more than enough opportunity to sit and dwell yeah, on what, things. What do you do with all that time? I mean, uh, but yeah, it's a, you, 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 you have a lot of time to yourself, and it's a, your time is your own. You aren't, a, you know, you don't belong to a, a corporation for eight or nine hours that day. Uh, you might not, and uh, then yeah, you can read, you can think. I mean, you, you can get a lot of, uh, you can get a lot done, um, you know, in those uh, in those eight hours, or you don't have to. So um, yeah, and you can and see see a lot of see a lot of the world, and that's one thing that's uh, my family didn't really understand was if, that we have property in Southern Illinois, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's kind of like this uh, where we are. And they're like, well, I mean, we've got Southern Illinois. Why do you want to go elsewhere? And it's like, there are a lot of other beautiful places I want to see. Like, <laughs> so it, obviously, that's you know, that is home for me. But um, you know, there's a lot of other beautiful places that I that I want to go. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. And you know, we we keep talking about that. I mean, our our buddy Chris, who has now wandered away, um, apropos since he is the wandering agorist. Um, <laughs> You know, keeps trying to encourage me to like, you know, just because he's been following all my stuff. And despite, you know, despite all the bad, bad times I've having, try, try to be more optimistic and just get out and travel. And, you know, I'm kind of locked in where, where I am right now, unfortunately. I mean, I, I got to come out here, which is nice. Um, and now I'm out here even longer than I originally planned because I left a day early because I wasn't going to see the kids anyway. And you know, Shane and I are, as, as I've talked about, we're gonna we're gonna stop and see Ben Stone uh, when we awesome. when we get out of here on Monday. And I don't we're even a, know. we're gonna have a mini Liberty Fest. He says he's gonna get out the bond, get out, get we're gonna set up a bonfire and have a mini Liberty Fest. Yep. So that's gonna be incredible. Yeah, I have and I have a feeling by the time we leave here on Monday, we're gonna have a couple more people following us. I just I have a feeling if I let <laughs> you know because Ben, the way Ben was talking, like you know, it's kind of like eh, if you trust the person. I think he may say, yeah, come on down, hang out. Let's have a little party. So <laughs> we may have a caravan going down to Ben's house. Really? Um, I, don't, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, no, I don't, I don't want to impose on him, but, you know, just to hang out and stuff. But, yeah, he's uh, that, that's going to be great. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to slowly make my way back east. 
And uh, then, unfortunately, I have to stick around there. Um, but I'd love to be out there traveling around and seeing all this stuff. You know, that's definitely, you know, one of the huge advantages to this type of lifestyle is just the ability to just pick up at pretty much any to wait. And, uh, you know, as, as we actually we've been talking about the past couple of days now, the whole, you know, the whole making money thing, you know, especially in the digital age, as you mentioned before, it's it's, you know, people don't realize. And even just the conversations you have had the past couple of days, things just all of a sudden occurred to me that I was like, holy crap, why didn't I think of this before? Like, there's tons of ways to make money out here. And, um, you know, one of the one of the ones that I, I'm going to try to pick back up on that, that Shane brought to my attention that I totally forgot about. Um, you know, doing like the, the, all those different apps, there's a bunch of different ones now where you can, where you do basically do grocery shopping for people, or you just pick up their groceries and deliver them to their house. And they have these, these, have these things set up all over the country and you can, as long as you schedule it or, you know, early enough and you manage to to pick a certain time slot that's open, you know, you can just cruise into that town just for that time slot. And yeah, make yourself work, work for five, six hours, make some money, and you move yeah. on. Yeah, and you don't even have to stay. Like even if you're just passing through, and you know you're going to pass through a particular town that has that offers that service, you know, whatever. Like stuff like that is available everywhere. There, you know, there are a lot of you know Postmates, Uber Eats. Um, Uber, if well, Uber, I'm not sure how that would work out for a van nomad. Um, oh yeah, you can't. Yeah, I was gonna say you can't do like because <laughs> you know there are. Yeah, you know, there, there are a lot of possibilities out there, and uh, DoorDash is one of them, and. Uh, yeah, there, there's quite a few. Yeah, so there's there's tons of opportunities out there for people to make money. I mean, obviously, if you're looking to do this long term, it may make sense to, uh, especially if you have, you know, especially if you're somebody like me who has a family and you have to think about more than just yourself, then you know you may want to do one of the set, set yourself up where you actually have a mobile job, you know, something where yeah. you, you know, something you could do from the road anyway. Um, you know, if you already have that type of thing or can you know work towards getting that, then you know, obviously that's the ideal. Because then you don't have to rely on anybody else. You just yeah. do, you know doing your work and selling whatever you're selling, and uh, you just do that. But if you if you don't have that set up, it's not as hard as you would think to make money. Because you know, or if, I mean, if you're willing, you can, you can roll like as long as you're willing to work, you can always find you know temporary positions or seasonal positions. Uh, those places are always hiring, and that those are kind of the most popular jobs for band nomads outside of you know entrepreneurship through you know digital nomadism. So yeah, there are a lot of options. There there really are. Yeah. And, you know, especially because the majority of people seem to, you know, f- try to keep their money, keep money down to like, you know, five. The, I think the ideal is usually what, 500 bucks five, a month? 500, 750 dollars a month yeah. was like the average out of the 100 or so case studies I looked at. So, I mean, yeah, 500, 70, 750 dollars a month. It's not hard to make that money. Um, it's it's really not. So. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. You know, you, you know, you know, that's one of those things. It's, it's kind of it's it kind of falls in the same line as. uh you know, all the uh, one of the uh, one of the common arguments about, about homeschooling is always the fact that oh, we can't afford to do it. It's like, well, you, you can do it for free. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> well, what people don't realize that you're take like you 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 can do you can do pretty much all of it for free, but they also don't take into account all the money they're saving by not going to this other job that they used to have. By like, you know, the, you're cutting out the travel time, you're cutting out the wear and tear on your car, you're cu- you're cutting out gas money, um, depending on the line of work you're in, uh, business clothing, um, food while you're out, and so like when you when you subtract all that stuff, it's like, oh wait a minute, we don't actually need as much money to live anymore. And this is the same type of thing. It's like, yeah, needing you know five living on five hundred to seven hundred fifty dollars a month may seem insane to some people. You know, people who have good you know good paying jobs and like are used to like having money to like kind of throw around. It's like, like that may seem insane to you, but when you take out the cost of rent or or mortgage, like you know, I cut, I cut a freaking three thousand dollar a month. Oh, I think it was. I think they finally lowered it to twenty eight hundred. I cut a twenty eight hundred dollar a month fucking living expense just for the fucking mortgage on my goddamn house, you know. And yeah, not so, and, so even if you're at the higher end, you're still saving. Uh, if you're even if you're on the higher monthly end, like a thousand dollars a month, that's still saving two thousand dollars. Exactly. So, I, and this is something that um, a, a guy, a guy that's uh, actually a guy on Steam at uh, at Joe's, he pointed out the the ability to, uh, or I guess the the ease of you know um, getting some investment capital through Van Nomadism. Um, like within 10 years, I think he was saying, um, um, and I, I can, if you go to steamit.com forward slash at Shane Radliff, um, scroll back to the response to Joe Sal and just read, read his responses because, uh, in, in a span of like 10 years, a van nomad could have $90,000 saved up if, uh, you know, um, if, if he was, li- if he was living in an apartment before, um, and, and you know, paying for that. So, um, and all of his expenses at like $500 a month. So raising, you know, capital investment for further ventures, as I said, van nomadism is a great interim lifestyle. I mean, maybe, maybe, and this is kind of what I'm looking to do is, uh, you know, use the use the van as a way to save a lot of money, and then uh, buy a sailboat with that capital investment or with that uh, investment capital. So, um, 
that's that's, uh, that's kind of the the goal at least. But I mean, there are a lot of ways to utilize this lifestyle. Absolutely, you know, like I said, no, no matter no matter your circumstance, there's uh, you know, there's there's de- there's definitely but be- there's definitely benefits that uh, I I I highly encourage everybody to try out. You know, um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I've said I've said plenty of times that I this is an opportunity I never thought I could get, which is kind of why I jumped on it, despite the fact that you know. A bunch of people, including including the wife, thought I was insane. Um, but you know, it's if you get the opportunity, why not? You know, I, I I don't I don't I don't see why not. And you know, I've obviously I'm I'm on the higher end of spending right now because I've had to. I've ended up investing a lot of money already into things, uh, just to just to be a little more comfortable out here. Uh, but you know, and and part you know, I just things I was just was going to purchase anyway or at some point. You know, I've I've dumped all that money in, but. Now I'm hoping starting, you know, getting close to rolling into my second month of it. Uh, I hopefully have more of it down. I figured out, you know, I've already figured out the food situation a little bit better and uh, how I can budget things around that. And outside of the just random crap that pops up that unfortunately, you know, that's going to pop up, especially if you're somebody like me who's carrying your dog around with, you know, like yeah. the, there's extra expenses that go into that. Um, but yeah, you can you can figure it out. And, you know, I, I've, ne- I've never been somebody who's been like, I've liked to have quasi nice things i guess but i've you know and i i've had some crap lying around most of my life but i was never like super materialistic i don't think yeah um but i still never thought the minimalism thing would ever be my my deal like anytime i looked at that and you and kind it, of had to live you had kind of have to live minimally well now. exactly <laughs> I, I i forced myself into a situation where i was forced to to accept some form of minimalism and as i've talked about in a couple of my videos it kind of became an addicting thing for a little while where I was like, oh, what can I cut out now? Oh, and do that, I really need this? that's another way it can save you money, too, is realizing that you don't need all some of the stuff that you have. You might be able to sell some of it. You might, you know, it might prevent you from making, uh, you know, more purchases you thought you needed before. So, I mean, there are, this this lifestyle does save a lot of money in a lot of different ways, that being one of them. Yep, absolutely. So, so yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Did you, did you ever get a uh, Triple M membership? I still haven't gotten around to doing that. I know. I, I know. I should. Um, I. Uh, I'm being a little, uh, you know, brazen right now that I have my little, uh, my little jump pack. I'm like, oh, I can handle. It. I got a jump pack. I got a. I got a tire. You know, I got the. I got a t- tire inflator on there. I got the spare tire in the back. I. You know, I should be okay. <laughs> but no, I, yeah. I, I, I. That is something. I'm actually mad at myself now because I actually did, uh, over the past. I don't know, six months or so before I finally sold the house, I had gotten a couple of notices from AAA, like offering me the like the supreme discount to sign back up really? again because I had been I had been a member for shit, probably close to two decades, and for a while I had actually been paying for my entire families, and I'm not not like my wife and shit, like my mom and my sister and stuff. Like somehow we ended up on like some joint plan joint account at one point, and I just ended up paying their bill every year because it ended up being like only a dollar for my sisters or whatever it was yeah. like it's so like i just paid for everybody's no stuff yeah so um and then i le- i finally let it lapse uh last year and i kept saying oh i should i should get back to that i should get back to that and i never did and then they started sending me those things that you know offering like ridiculous deals oh just come back to us and sign up for a year for this low price and i never took advantage of it and i have since i haven't seen any junk mail yet that has come through <laughs> yeah I, I actually did end up um getting it before i before i left town just i mean it was 150 dollars um for the year and that's with like a 20 or 30 dollar membership initial membership fee and uh, just because I, I mean i'm driving out of texas if i get a flat tire because I, I told you last night i have a nail in my in my front driver's tire uh driver's side tire but uh you know it's not leaking so, but you know maybe it'll blow out on the way down and at that if i'll have some sort of uh you know some, i guess uh <clears throat> i don't know it's uh, i guess a uh, peace of mind knowing that i can just call AAA and it's not a big deal at all yeah no i that's well again my 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 my, my whole experience on my vlog series is all about what not to do remember folks i've, I've mentioned that <laughs> um but yeah no definitely the triple a membership of course is one of those things you know one of those upfront costs obviously that you'll have to throw out at front but again it and is, you are you were kind of hanging out hanging around Long Island, so you yeah, had to I call, had to, so you didn't necessarily need it. Oh yeah, please. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole reason I have the jump pack is because I blew out, I, I freaking, I drained the ba- I, you know, I drained the battery with the stupid refrigerator, and I ended up having to call my wife to come freaking yeah. to, to go uh, give me a jump in a parking lot somewhere, um, you know. So that I I went out and spent the money on that, but. I like to have those things around anyway, because heck, I, I we used it, we used it last night. We sat on the table. I used it to charge my phone. It was wonderful. Yeah, um, yeah AAA membership is definitely something that uh, you should probably have if you're going to try this. Yeah, so I, I can't imagine. You know, if you're 100 miles out in the desert, I can't imagine how much that tow would cost. 
Um, but yeah, with with AAA, it, do, it doesn't really matter. So 100, 200 miles, you you've got uh, you've got toes. So yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a no brainer. Yeah, no -brainer. yeah. I will, for someone uh, that's gonna be traveling, I can under like I said, I can understand why you didn't. Oh yeah, well, I it would probably actually make sense for me to sign up before I head back east again. Um, I probably won't, but at the ve at, at the very at the very least, I will definitely do it before I head back out west again, like before I take the next trip out, trips out here, and then when I finally make that trip to South Dakota, um, which again, I have no idea when that's going to happen because I have all my <laughs> fucking I still have to wait for the court shit to get figured out. But yeah, I'll de I'll definitely pick it up before I make that trip because then like e even though I, I I mean I put myself at risk by m taking the drive because it's like I think it's like a I think I did almost 800 miles altogether out here between the stops I made and the different like pit stops and whatever. Um, so, I mean, even that I know I was taking a risk, but it's a road I've literally traveled multiple times. Like this, <laughs> this entire route, with the exception of meeting you in Kalamazoo, that was the first time I was ever in Kalamazoo. Um, but the rest of the route, like I've taken multiple times now, like I know the entire route. Like I even stop at the same re fucking rest stops in the same service areas. Right. So, uh, like, I know, like, I felt safe, I guess, enough, or, you know, I convinced myself I was safe enough. But, yeah, on Long Island, I'm not worried about that. But when I take the trip out to South Dakota, I'm dev I'm going to be passing through states I've never fucking been in before. Yeah. Um, I mean, why the hell would anyone go to South Dakota? <laughs> the only reason, well, uh, I, I've been told it's beautiful. I've been told, like, I've seen I pictures, actually, yeah. and I've been told by people who visited there that it's, you know, there's tons of beautiful country out there. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, why would you go to South Dakota? For no other reason other than to spend a night to get residency. <laughs> Right. That's the only reason I can see, and yeah. it's the reason was, I'm doing I it. I was born there, but I never went back. So. <laughs> yeah, it's kinda, you know, it was so funny. I heard you mention that recently, and yeah. I was like, I was like, holy crap, I never realized that. That's even funnier now that we're using yeah. the service. That um, yeah. Did you get that hooked up yet? Did you do the uh, you be your best mail.com? I, I need to. I need to. Cause yeah, I, best I address, mean, sorry. Yeah, I need to. But uh, no, I haven't haven't done it yet. I'm, I, I'm well. Not, you still I'm, you I'm still have somebody. From spending, I'm gonna refrain from spending money on anything until I get down to Austin and figure out what I want to do. Because I might get a, I might just get a post office box. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, well, yeah. But you do still have somebody at the location where you were getting mail who can still take your mail in, correct? Yeah, I can. I can have it sent to my parents' house or my brother's house. Or I've got. P I, yeah, but it's, it's not a problem. Yeah. So you don't you don't have to worry. Like I didn't have that option because I had to. You know, I had to get a forwarding address because. Yeah. As I've talked about, the, the fucking Levittown post office is, is idiotic enough. I mean, they lost a package that was sitting on the supervisor's desk for two fucking days, even though I spoke to the supervisor face to face. <laughs> and he told me he had never seen the package I was referring to. And then two days later, after he said that for the second time, told me he still hadn't seen my package. He said, oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's sitting right here. <laughs> um, you know, aside from that, uh, I've, I've actually had a wonderful experience so far. I actually, I haven't gotten any notifications, but I've also had some uh, internet service since I've, uh, issues since I've been up here, uh, which was expected because, well, I have Ting, which uses Sprint, and Sprint sucks largely in a lot of places, uh, <laughs> especially out in the woods. So I was expecting that, but I, I've, you know, I successfully got that one package, um, so I know that I know it works. And uh, they did send me another email telling me that I actually the, the some of the forwarded mail that finally came from the Levittown post office because they screwed that whole thing up when they were supposed to hold <laughs> my mail. Because and actually, I I don't think I ever mentioned that the one thing that I was told not only but by, by the guy at the post the supervisor at the post office but by the woman at the DMV the day that I had to go in and actually get a second copy of my registration because they had accidentally sent they had forwarded my mail to South Dakota instead of holding it like they were supposed to. <laughs> um, both of the, the supervisor at the at the USPS office in Levittown and the the woman at the DMV both told me that that the registration because it was a particular type of government form was not allowed to be forwarded. Like they that don't they they yeah, don't like, they. I had to turn off my mail forwarding it uh, from um, to Decatur when I got my driver's license sent because they wouldn't forward it. Yeah, that yeah. yeah exactly that that's what I was told. Yep. When I got the email from your best address the other day, I had four pieces of mail. One of them was the fucking registration so to they, my goddamn car. They, I was were, like, they weren't supposed to send that. No, and it wasn't it oh, wasn't man. even your best address. It was the USPS yeah. that did it. They, they broke their own laws. They, they broke the, <laughs> they broke their own laws and what the guy told me face to face was like, "Oh yeah, we can't send that. It just it won't happen." <laughs> It'll get sent sure. back to the DMV <laughs> office. And I'm like, you know, that was the same problem originally with the package that disappeared because they were the, the people at the USP, like the people at your best address were great because I just happened to ask what would happen if I got a package or something delivered to somebody to that address, but somebody else's name. And they were like, well, we, you know, we might ask you about it, but we're really under no obligation to give it to you because it's not addressed to you. It just happened to come to your box. It could be mm -hmm. an accident, whatever. Um and, you know, I, I pressed a little further, and then the woman asked me why, and I, you know, I told her, I 
made up some bullshit that I have a pen name. Um, <laughs> Which is a name I actually planned on using. I, I shouldn't say it's not complete bullshit because I, I I have talked about before. There is a book that I am planning on writing at some point, um, which has nothing to do with any of this stuff. But it'll actually probably confuse the hell out of a lot of people when I finally get around to writing it. Anyway, um, but I the, the name I planned on using for that just because unfortunately my name has been tainted um, largely in a lot of circles. Um, but anyway, I was going to. Um, use it down the line so i just said well you know just for instance i'm like if i have a pen name i'm a writer like and i get stuff like fan mail or whatever they get sent to that name they're like oh just we'll just give us that name and we'll put it on the list okay, and i was like okay easy enough so they were fine with it the usps of course because if you go into a post office they want to see sure. your they want to see your now, id even even at ups now i was surprised i sent out i put out i sent out a few orders before i left town and yeah they uh the UPS store, they they require driver's licenses with you know the ad the address the return address that's on the uh, on the piece of mail that you're sending. Really? Um, yeah, that's at least uh, there in Illinois. Yeah, I've so. been asked. I, I see. I'm, I was, as you were saying that, I'm thinking about it because I've been asked for. I used to use I used to use the UPS store a lot because there was one within walking distance from my house. So it's damn near impossible to go um, without any of these documents. Now. It really is. But yeah. I'm trying to think. I, I've had to like. I've got. I, that's where I went to get things notarized all the time because it was a little old lady who did it. She took forever, but she only charged like a dollar fifty or whatever. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll go there to get my shit notarized. Um, and I, I always have to show it for that, and I have to show when I pick up a package. But I don't think I've ever been asked for my when I've sent something. I don't think I've ever been asked. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that, like I said, that was UPS, uh, the UPS store. Yeah, but, no, I was uh, saying. I, yeah, I, it's that might be a new and, that, and they're under and, and they're under more stringent, uh, you know, requirements to to follow the laws than than the USPS is. The USPS can you know fuck them all, and I mean they're not they're not going to you know abolish the USPS, which obviously we would love to see, but. Uh, you know they're not going to do that. They can you know make mi- make mistakes and be incompetent, and that's fine. But if UPS you know screws up, uh, you know they can actually get in trouble for that sort of thing. So yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it really is. Uh, yeah. Thanks, government. Thanks, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, on that note, I think we're going to wrap this up because this was supposed to just be a vlog. But well, you know what? We've been going for. Jeez, I don't even know now. I, I can't see that far. Um, 41 minutes? Okay. Yeah, probably like 45 minutes or so. But you know what? You didn't get a vlog yesterday, folks. So, you know, extra long one today. And, uh, you know, like I said, I have a guest. It's great. Um, uh, so, yeah, this has been a lot of fun, man. For uh, sure. Appreciate it. We're going to we're gonna definitely do a lot more recordings this weekend. Um, I, I will try to continue to get my vlogs out. Like I said, la- yesterday I just got so screwed up and I was so frustrated with the, with the like 10 attempts just to op- upload a fucking eight. I think it was like a four or eight minute video. Like, just the problems I was having with that, I just never got around to it. And once we ended up deciding to come here last night and set up camp here instead of moving on again, uh, you know, we just started standing around. A couple other people showed up, and we ended up talking for a lot. Um, I almost died by eating some of Danny's fucking hot... Oh, yeah. uh, His hot chocolate, which he he now has two two levels of... And and no, not not drinking hot chocolate, as our friend Chris thought mistakenly when he went over to join us, (laughs) um, but pieces of chocolate that he makes with um, hot, you know, different types of pepper inside of them. Um, and now, it's an experience. He, yeah, now he has two levels. Um, one is called pain. The other one is punishment. I opted for punishment because I ate his. I ate probably most of the chocolate he brought last year because it was just so fucking good. Um, and I love spicy food and the hot shit and whatever. Um, yeah, this one he made with like all the de- all like the world's hottest peppers, like you know the Reaper, the, Car- the Carolina Reaper, you know ghost peppers, and like the other stuff, or Dragon something or other, like all the other ones that are now coming out that actually are uh, they're ranking higher on the Scoville, and you know because the ghost pepper used to be the hottest thing, and now it's like you know ghost peppers like nothing compared to some of these other fuckers. But he had uh, all of them mixed together, and uh, yeah, I idiotically took the entire thing and shoved it in my mouth and listened to him when he said, really let it soak in. So I'm sitting there <laughs> chewing it slowly, letting it, you know, the whole chocolate piece of chocolate swish around my mouth. And uh, yeah, as soon as it went down the pipe, holy fuck. I said it last night. It was probably, probably one of, if not the hottest thing I've ever eaten. Yeah, it was it was a five it feels like a five minute little adventure. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, it, it didn't go away quickly. It took about ten minutes for me to wear it off. Surprisingly, I did not go for a drink or anything. I, I don't know why. I just stood there kind of dumbfounded. It was it was insane. And like we I said, I love did. stuff like that. But <laughs> man, that was uh, and Shane actually only had the pain one, and that was a uh, you know that was yeah. his, his introduction. Like I said last year, I ate it like the first time. Danny, the guy, yeah. Well, obviously you guys don't know little Danny, but anyway, Danny, um, when he offered me one the first time, I was like, "This is delicious." And then apparently it was too hot for a lot of people, and he had a lot left over, and I ended up eating like half a container by myself one night. Um, so I thought I would, I thought I'd have no problem stepping up to the next level, and wow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know what? Still a great experience. And I said, um, I'll 
probably end up taking another one at some point <laughs> because I may not pop the entire thing in my mouth this time. I may try to go like a quarter at a time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, good times. So anyway, yeah, like I said, uh, we'll probably wrap this up, but we're going to try to, uh, we'll try to do some more recordings. Definitely got a lot of podcasts planned this weekend. Uh, there should definitely be some new Fiends episode, Freedom Fiends episodes that come out of this. Uh, some new Seeds of Liberty because Shane Buell is also here and he and I and hopefully some guests, maybe Shane, maybe Shane here, maybe some other people will get to do some uh, in-person recordings for the Seeds of Liberty. Um, I think this one I'm actually going to turn into my abolitionist subtractions this week, too, because I don't have one of those yet. And since it's been the two of us and we've been talking for this long, heck, I might put this out as an audio. Yeah, um, but yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do a lot of other stuff and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Like I said, hopefully this should actually come out today. So you guys should actually see this. And uh, you still have time since the fest that only officially started uh, an hour and a half ago. You still have uh, you still have time if you're anywhere close to, to Michigan or can get close to Michigan. Come on down, uh, you know, and if you're close by and, you know, thought about coming but didn't, you can still come up for a day. There's still day passes and stuff. Come hang out. Uh, we're going to have lots of fun. So, all right. Sure. So I will sign off for now. Thank you, as always, for everybody for watching. Uh, thank you for your continued support. Uh, unfortunately, my comments will probably be down a little bit because my most consistent commenter is, well, he's here with us. Um, <laughs> Chris, wherever he wandered off to. Um, but, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll check back in tomorrow, and um, hopefully there will be a lot more to come. So uh, this is Abolitionist Day. Out. Peace.